Welcome to TK Tennis. Let's get right into it. If you're looking to purchase a new tennis racket, do not go out to Walmart, Target, or any sporting goods store and purchase a racket. They are complete garbage. They're typically made out of aluminum instead of graphite. They're made with multiple piece construction and they have terrible strings. Tennis is hard enough even with good rackets. Tennis is a highly skilled sport and trying to control that fuzzy yellow ball is not an easy thing to do and you're only going to make it harder if you purchase a cheap tennis racket with cheap strings. Now what you should do is demo as many rackets as possible. Don't just go out and choose a racket. Demo a lot of rackets. There are two ways to do that. If you have a local pro shop, go to your local pro shop and ask to demo some rackets. And it's the best way because they typically put nice quality strings and you also have a local store that you can swap out rackets and demo a lot of rackets in short order. If you don't have a local store, then you can also go to an online retailer such as TennisExpress.com or TennisWarehouse.com and order demos online. They're typically about $5 each or about $20 for three different rackets. I recommend to use TennisExpress.com. They do a better job with their demos. They put high quality strings in and they let you know what strings they're installing when you receive the racket. Tennis Warehouse has been known to put in some really cheap nylon strings, so I would avoid Tennis Warehouse for your demos. All right, now there's four fundamental things you need to know when you're choosing a racket, and this may take some time to figure out, but it's really important that you sort of note these things down as you're playing with different demos. The first one, as you can see here, is the string pattern. String patterns are typically uh, mains. You have the main strings right here, and then you have the cross strings. But when you talk about string pattern, you're really only talking about either 16 main strings or 18 main strings. 16 main strings have larger gaps between the cross strings and the main strings and what that does allows the racket to put more spin on the ball. It has more bite into the ball but it also launches the ball at a higher launch angle. If you have an 18 main pattern right, uh, they typically have a little bit less spin and the trajectory is a little bit more direct and that's total uh, and that's a total preference. So when you're demoing rackets you want to note whether that string pattern was 16 mains or 18 mains. And as you're playing, determine which pattern you prefer. The second thing is head size. Head sizes are typically measured in square inches. They come in 95 square inch head sizes, 98, 100, and then there are other variations, 104, 107, etc. This is a 100 square inch head size. It's the most popular. Advanced players will use 100 very comfortably and also good for novice players. But the larger the head size, the more you're going towards the novice side. So if you're going to 104 or 107, they're typically for novice players, or let's say, uh, or older players. The smaller the head size, a 95, is typically for the highly advanced players or the professionals. So most recreation players should not be using a 95 square inch head. Most should be using a 98 or 100. So as you're demoing rackets, Note the head size that you prefer the most. Really important to note that. Okay, the third thing is weight. Weights of the racket, the total static weight. We're not gonna get into the swing weight in this video. We're just gonna get into the static weight. Let's call it light, medium, and heavy, even though there's variations in the range. Most light rackets are around 285 grams in total weight, and that's not including the strings. Strings at about 17 or 18 grams, typically, to the weight. But what you see on the label, on the inside of the, on the throat, or on the side, or insides, you'll typically know what the racket is. Also in the model name, it typically will say a 300 or a 315. But rackets typically come in three ranges. Either the 285s that are light, and that could be a 275, 280, 285. They're sort of the light category. Then you have the 300s, the most popular category, where, where it's good for novices, and also advanced players, even though novices may prefer a 285 racket. And then you have the 315 gram rackets, which are typically for the more advanced players as well. So as you're demoing rackets, note down, did you prefer the lighter variations or the heavier variation? For, for the most part, most models will come in three or four different variations of weight from all manufacturers, whether it's Wilson, or it's Head, or it's Yonex, or it's Babolat, they will typically have a typical racket. Let's say this is the Head Gravity. They'll have a Head Gravity uh, head gravity Team, which is the light version. They'll have a Head Gravity MP, which is the 300 version. And they'll have a Head, head Gravity Pro, which is the 315 version. So again, very important to note 
what type of racket in terms of weight do you prefer most. The next thing is strings. This may be a little bit more difficult because the demos may have different variations of strings, but there are five typical string choices that you have. So nylon, synthetic gut, multi-filament, polyester, and real gut. Nylon are complete trash. Stay away from nylon strings. No one should be stringing with nylon strings. Sometimes a demo will have nylon strings and just because it's cheap. If it does have nylon strings in it, don't even consider the racket because it will destroy the way the racket plays. You won't be able to tell if the racket is a great racket or not because the nylon strings are so bad. We're also going to skip through synthetic gut. Synthetic gut very rare these days and it's been pretty much replaced by multi-filament strings. Multi-filament strings, my favorite is the head MLT multi-filament. Multi-filament strings typically are softer, so they're better on the arm, less likely to cause tennis elbow, and more powerful. They hit the ball harder. Um, so multi-filaments are, are great, uh, and they're typically for the players in ranging from 2.0 to 4.0. So if you're a more novice player, intermediate player, you're probably going to like a multi-filament string. But you want to know, is it a multi-filament or is it a polyester string, the fourth variation? Polyester strings have pretty much taken over the tennis game at the higher levels. All pros are using polyester or polyester in a combination of gut. But polyester imparts more spin but is less powerful. So you have to have natural power or full strokes to take advantage of the, the benefits of polyester string. Uh, and for gut, we're going to leave gut aside. Gut is pretty rare and it's very expensive and I wouldn't advise obviously demoing any racket with gut and no demos are going to have gut installed. So note down whether you like synthetics or polyester strings uh, depending on your level and depending on what you feel. And the last thing is during this demo process is identify what racket felt the best. What just felt comfortable to you. In addition to all those sort of guidelines and the specifications that you like, Note what racket just felt better. Some feel more solid, some feel a little less solid, some feel a sound differently, some sound a little tingy, some sound a little bit more thumpy, um, some are a little bit thicker in the beams, and that's totally a personal preference. So you want to just feel what racket felt the best. That's really important. And if a certain racket felt great, then go back and also note those four different criteria. Well, what string pattern did it have? What was its weight? what type of strings did it have in it, and what was its head size. Because that'll, that'll help you define what sort of your preferences are. So that's my buying guide for choosing a new racket. And if you haven't seen this video yet, I'll post it right here, the 90s Phenom video. It's a very inspirational video in my mind. Please check it out. I typically say help me get to a thousand subscribers, but I'm going to try and play the long game. Let's, I know I only have a few hundred subscribers right now. So I'm going to do the road to 100,000 subscribers. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.